Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. We welcome those that are listening and those that we'll be viewing later on. A couple of announcements before we get started. A week from today will be our annual congregational meeting. That will follow the 1030 service. Um, at the entrances to the church, you will find coupons that look like this for the warehouse. Love in the Name of Christ is having a fundraiser that's taking place this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And 20% of the proceeds from your meal go to um, Love, Inc. as a fundraiser. So if you're interested in that, pick up one of the coupons at the entrances to the church. Um, there's other announcements and more details about all of that in the bulletin along with the schedule for the week. Before we get ready for worship, though, I have one other item to make mention of, and that is this plaque that I am holding in my hand right now. Some of you may be aware of this already because there was an article in the Marion Star about this. This week in the church office, we received this certificate from the Office of the Secretary of Defense. Employer support of the Guard and Reserve. It recognizes Pastor Mark Schuring and Emanuel Lutheran Church as a patriotic employer for contributing, contributing to national security. Does that sound good or what? You know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> for contributing to national security and protecting liberty and freedom by supporting employee participation in America's National Guard and Reserve Force. We were nom nominated by our secretary, Erica Melligan, for the support that our congregation has offered to her, her husband Jonas, and his unit in Afghanistan. Part of Erica's nomination narrative read, first of all, I could not make it without the support of my supervisor and co-workers and the members of Emanuel Lutheran Church. Emanuel Lutheran Church sent a prayer shawl to each family of the deployed soldiers. Every Sunday, they remember my husband, his unit, and all deployed soldiers in their prayer time. Emmanuel Lutheran adopted all the soldiers deployed from my husband's unit and sent care packages every month. The unit received about six care packages every month. The congregation also supported me in various other ways. Jonas is scheduled to return to the United States in April, so we keep his unit in our prayers for a safe reunion with their families and congratulations to all of you that helped support Erica, Jonas, and his unit in any way. This certificate will be placed in the gathering space for the next couple of weeks so you can check it out yourself. We're ready for worship now. Would you please rise for the confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess, in, let us come into the light of Christ, confessing our need for God's mercy. Holy and faithful God, we so often choose our own way instead of yours. We think we can evade your commandments. We have spoken in ways that kill, strayed with our hearts, betrayed friends, and hated enemies. We have broken our promises. Search us deeply and create us anew. Lift the heavy burden of our sin and free us to follow your way of life. Amen. Call upon me, says the Lord, and I will answer. Our God has come among us to loose every bond and set us free from all that weighs us down. Receive the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Savior. Amen. Let us join in our gathering hymn, Gather Us In, hymn number 532.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, with endless mercy you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your Spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Are there any other children that would like to come up for the children's message? All righty. Let me find a path to get down in front here. Scoot over just a little. Anybody else? Oh, there's one. This week when I read about the Bible message, I was reminded of this Snoopy cartoon. Snoopy sitting on top of his doghouse, as he often did at his typewriter, and he always wanted to write a story, and it always seemed as though he started his story the same way. It was a dark and stormy night. Now, it's sort of tough for us to think about dark and stormy nights right now, except for snowstorms, right? But think about during the summertime when we have a thunderstorm. Does it get scary when there's a thunderstorm at night sometimes? Yeah, and what happens sometimes when we have a thunderstorm? The lights go out. Yeah, we lose electricity, don't we? Mm hmm. Is that right? All right. Well, when the lights go out at home when, during a storm, what do we end up having to do? What do we get out? We get out either, what, flashlights or candles, right? Okay. Yeah, well, that's what Jesus is talking about in the Bible story today. He says that you, not candles, but he says that you are the light of the world. And then he tells us something that does have to do with a lamp or a light or a candle, that no one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket. Now, let's think about that. And I have a candle for each one of you today. And you can keep this as a reminder that you are the light of the world. And you can remind yourself of this Bible story today. I hope they all work. Here we go. Have you figured out how these turn on yet? Yeah, we can all turn our candles on. Oh, good. Everybody's candle works. That's good. Now, what Jesus said in the Bible story that Pastor Mark's going to read in just a little bit is, no one would take a lamp and put a bushel basket over it. Why would we do that? That's just ridiculous, isn't it? That's crazy to do that. That's like with your candle right now, why would you want to put your hand over the candle light of it? You would not. You, won't, you don't want to put your hand over the flame because you can't see it then. And that is what Jesus is telling us in the Bible today. We are the light of the world, and we are to let our light shine before others so they may see our good works. Now, Jesus is sort of talking about candles like this, but he's talking about us doing our good works. What kind of good works can we do so that we are the light of the world? so that other people see our light. What kind of good works can we do? Any ideas? When mom asks you to clean your room, do you do it the first time or the second time or the third time she asks you? Is that a tough one for you, Maddie? <laughs> mm-hmm. Are we to get along with our brothers and our sisters? Mm-hmm. And we're to do whatever mom and dad tells us to do? And then maybe a little extra sometimes, huh? Yeah. Are we supposed to go to bed when mom and dad tells us to go to bed? Yeah, there's all kinds of things that we can do. Just being friendly to each other, saying hi to each other. Hey, how you doing? Those are all good works so that we can be seen as the light of the world. So let's remember to do good works 
so that others will see that we are the light of the world. So before we go back to our seats or to Children's Church, let's have a prayer. And this will be repeat after me, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to be the light of the world. Let us to let his, whoops, let me start over again. Help us to let his light shine through us. Help us to let his light shine through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And just as Pastor Mark will say in a little while, I'm stealing the thunder from him already, remember that you are the light of the world. You can go back to your seats or to Children's Church now. reading is from the 58th chapter of Isaiah, reading verses 1 through 9a. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me of righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and fight and to strike with the wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? It is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. The word of the Lord. The responsive reading is Psalm chapter 112, verses 1 through 9. Please follow from your bulletin. The congregation response is in bold print. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Sentence will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. They will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands last forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The second reading is from the second chapter of 1 Corinthians, reading verses 1 through 12. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. 
My speech and my proclamation were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of the spirit of, and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him, these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. The Word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand and gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, Whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. But if that light is under a bushel, brr, it's lost something kind of crucial. You got to stay bright to be the light of the world. Well, so I sang, along with a few others at the church, when we had that musical and performed it together. When I went home that night, I got a chance to reflect upon the amazing thing we had done that night. The musical Godspell had forever changed me, but in the hours after the show, I had no idea how much. You are the light of the world, we all sang. David Foster, director of the Center for Living Arts, who played Jesus in the musical, 
went out in the audience at that moment. He grabbed someone, had them stand up so that we could all sing just to him when we sang, you are the salt of the earth. Then quickly he went to another man and he dashed. He got him to stand up so he could point to him and sing, you are the city of God. Finally, he found one last woman who would have just as soon been left alone. She was sitting near the back and when, then we got to sing one more time, you are the light of the world. It was the last song before intermission and we left the sanctuary rocking. Oh yes, we did. Intermission meant we were halfway home and we all sensed that things were going well. Now saying something, no small something, because none of the rehearsals had gone well. We hardly got any of it right before then. And then at the end of the show, after singing that beautiful refrain, we can build a beautiful city. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can build a beautiful city, not just of angels, but finally a city of man. I felt such a great sense of accomplishment that evening. Well, we circulated among the worshipers who had come, and one woman approached me. She told me that she had had a wonderful time. She loved the music and was so glad she had come. Years before, in an antique store, she had gotten a hold of one of the original playbills, playbills of God's Spell, and had had it all those years. Right afterwards, she went out and bought the album, but literally never put it on the record player. That's like a DVD or an iPod for the rest of you. So she kind of wondered what God's Spell was. When she saw us in the paper, she decided on a whim to come check it out. Well, I told her how happy we were that she was there and hoped that she would come back to worship with us. The next day, I was talking to the head usher about what a great experience the show was. We were marveling at the amount of people that came and how many people came that were not members of the church. I told him about a woman I had talked to after the show, and he quickly realized who I was talking about. Yeah, I talked to her too, just after intermission. She seemed like she was looking for something. So I decided to try to go help her, and I pointed out that she was the woman who was the one sung to during that last song, and she kind of laughed and said, no one has ever called me that before. I got goosebumps when he told me that. I thanked him for telling me about their exchange. I went back to my office and was overwhelmed. Call it the Holy Spirit, call it what you will. I can just describe it as something very powerful as I prayed. Thank you, God. I don't mind telling you that my eyes welled up with tears. I fell into my chair as those tears ran down my cheeks with that overwhelming sense of awe, wonder, sadness, joy, and purpose. No one has ever called me that before. There were many things that happened that night that were memorable, actually that happened through the whole time of putting that musical together. I remembered the impromptu rehearsals in the sanctuary with fellow performers dancing and singing. I would have remembered the choir director who seemed to make it her personal job to make sure I was in the right place at the right time during the whole musical, nudging me to go out when it was time for the Good Samaritan skit. I would have remembered the prayer we shared before the show. I would have remembered hugging Mr. Foster during the farewell song, We Can Build a Beautiful City. And I remember whispering to him, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Now, with or without that conversation with my head usher, I would have relished the glow of accomplishing something really huge for God because we did and we worked as a team. After hearing the woman in the story who had never been told that she was the light of the world, though, I suddenly gained a lot more. You see, you are the light of the world is not some catchy line in a pretty song in an upbeat musical. You are the light of the world are Jesus' words to his followers, words from the Sermon of the Mount, just a small part of Jesus' dissertation about what it really means to live in this world. You are the light of the world. It is a claim on those who had gathered at this, the Mount and it is assurance of what Jesus' hearers are and what they shall be. You are the light of the world, Jesus said so long ago. You are the light of the world, he declares today. You. So let your light shine. So others may see your good works and glorify your Father 
in heaven. There is a light within you that is good. There is a light within you that is God. There is a light within you that needs to be seen. Oh, does it need to be seen. I think of all the children of the world that have never been told that they are the light of anyone's world. And it just breaks my heart. I think for a moment of all the people stuck in abusive relationships, allowing their lives to be crushed, and I want to scream. I think for a moment of our youth that want only to hide and be as invisible as possible so as not to draw anyone's attention, and it kills me to know that they may never have been told you were created in the very image of God, the light of God created at the very moment of creation. That's in you. Hear Jesus crying to you. You are the light of the world. Yes, you. You are. Not the person on your left or right. They are too, but you are the light of the world. I want us to do something together as a people. I want to start a salt and light log. I'd like to build this log into our web page. Either way, the goal is, number one, to help us start looking for God in the world, thereby gathering a skill that many people do not seem to possess. And number two, come to believe that we are vessels through which God is working, thereby growing in the name given to us at baptism, Christian, growing into the identity we have been given in baptism, Christian. To make this work, you will need to communicate with me directly about where you see God at work in the world, week by week, day by day. For now, perhaps you could email me directly. My email address is on the website, so feel free to use that. And if you don't like email, maybe you could write it down and share it with me. Eventually, I hope the log will end up on the web page, minus your last name so that others can read it too. <coughs> Pardon me. You know, I don't know if this is going to work. But even if only two or three of you respond, that's two or three more than might have been looking for God in the world otherwise. And who knows, maybe a dozen of you will respond. What a witness. Maybe two dozen, maybe a hundred. A hundred Christians being salt and light, naming it sharing it and growing into that identity more fully day by day. Boy, that musical gave me much more than I gave it. It gave me memories, it gave me friendships. It gave me a knowledge about myself. It gave me a renewed sense of purpose. But what it gave me as well was a new way to think about my mission as a Christian in this world to name the presence of God so that others may see as well. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As we are called to be the light of the world, let us confess together our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by the light of Christ, who has been made known to the nations, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need.
your light springs forth like the dawn. Call your church to share the mystery of your grace with a broken world and a searching world. Today we pray especially for St. Luke Lutheran Church in North Baltimore and their pastor, Ralph Minio. Lord, in your mercy. Increase our care for the earth and all its creatures. Help us reflect your light in our use of these good gifts. Lord, in your mercy. You care for the weak and strong, O oh God. Raise up leaders who will free the oppressed in all places. Lord, in your mercy. Quickly send your healing for all those in pain. We pray especially for those whose names are listed in the bulletin, along with Mike Sider, Michael Heff, Jeremy Bros, Chuck Smith, Helenia Stanley, Marcia Geyer, Ron Lane, Ed Foster, Deb Melvin, Alan Lust, Sue Snavely, Danielle Trachtenberg, Sonia Amy. We pray for those in care facilities, those bound at home, and all caregivers. We ask for your blessings upon the military. We offer our prayers for all others whose names we place before you this morning. We pray that you feed the hungry and shelter the homeless. Lord, in your mercy. Give light and life to this gathering of faith, that we may delight to know your ways and share them with a world longing to know you. Lord, in your mercy. Satisfy our needs until we gather with all your saints from every time and place in your glorious light. Lord, in your mercy. Radiant God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who has made his dwelling among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ to be with you always. And also with you. Let us extend a sign of peace to one another. Peace of God. Peace with you.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our sending hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, hymn number 836. Go in peace, Christ is your light. Thanks be to God.